Proverbs 23:33. You will see weird things and your mind will play tricks on you. Marami kayong mga makikitang kakaiba at paglalaroan kayo ng inyong guni-guni. The devil in your mind. Salamat Panginoon dahil kayo ay liwanag, katotohanan, kapangyarihan, kagalingan. Nawaan niyo pong mga pagtuturo ay maging ganun ang talab sa amin ngayon. Maliwanagan, matuwid, gumaling, mapalaya. Mangusap po kayong may kapangyarihan, gamitin niyo ang inyong lingkod na kasangkapan at ang mga anak ninyo ay pagpalain ng inyong kaliwanagan. Father, we thank you, we seek your truth, we seek your power. In the name of Jesus, your Son, our Lord and Savior. Marami mga tao ay nabubuhay sa sobrang pagbagabag ng kanilang budhi. Many people suffer from needless guilt feelings. Many people live half lives in fear of committing sin. Sa takot na magkasala, sa takot na magkamali, maparusahan, masyadong playing safe sa buhay, Marami na tuloy na pwedeng mga kasiyahan at kaligayahang malasa pero hindi nararanasan dahil sobrang takot. Sobrang takot na magkamali. At marami mga tao, they overblame and overcredit the devil. Lagi nilang nandun ang devil, laging devil ang nakakapangyari na nanalo sa kanilang buhay sa tingin nila. But that evil thought in your mind is probably not of the devil and definitely not of God. Marami tayong sobrang ibinibigay na credit sa devil na ay pinagawa to sa akin ng devil, ay kinausap ko ng devil, ay nanalo ang devil sa buhay ko. Pero madalas guni-guni lang natin 'yon. Maraming mga iniisip nating mga kasalanan at kamalian sa ating isip, hindi naman talaga yung devil ang naglalagay kundi tayo. Well, meron naman talagang devil ang naglalagay. Pero sobrang dami ang pinagbibintangan natin na siyang naglagay yung pala. Tayo rin naman ang may likha. James 1.13 Don't blame God when you are tempted. God cannot be tempted by evil. And He doesn't use evil to tempt others. Hindi nanunukso ang Diyos at hindi gumagamit ang Diyos ng masama para manukso ng tao. What you call evil thought in your mind is most likely your own thought. And when it is not really evil, but you still call it evil, you prob- it's probably your own judgment on your own thought. Sa aking karanasan sa counseling, kahit sa Facebook, kahit sa personal counseling, ang daming mga tao, pinoproblema, hindi naman dapat problemahin, lagi itinatalong, kasalanan po ba ito? Kasalanan po ba yun? Nagkasala po ako, pero kung susuriin mo, wala naman talagang kasalanan sa ginawa nila, na buo na lang sa isip nila, kung kanikano nila na mana, na pulot, na kasalanan ng isang bagay na kung tutuusin, pag talagang tinag mo sa Biblia, hindi naman kasalanan. Nagiging kasalanan lang dahil binasa, ininterpret at inapply nung unang panahon, ng mga generations of teachers and believers and religions na kasalanan. Pero pag bumalik ka sa basic teaching of God, pag binasa mo sa tamang konteksto, hindi iniwalay dun sa kapaligiran kung bakit itinuro yun, hindi naman talaga kasalanan. Ang dami-daming pagdurusa ng tao, lungkot, usig ng budhi, guilt, at yung iba nagpapakamatay pa, sa mga bagay na kung tutuusin, kung Diyos lamang ang tatanungin diretsahan, hindi naman kasalanan. Pinagmukha lang kasalanan ng mga peddlers, controllers, dispensers of religion. All throughout history and all civilizations, lalo dun sa mga salvation-centered religions, Sobrang dinevelop ng mga religious teachers yung concept of sin and forgiveness. Tapos yung church ang merong hawak ng power to forgive. Nang forgiveness, in the longest time in history, ay nabibili, nababayaran. Kaya gusto-gusto ng religions na mga tao guilty. Kasi pag guilty sila, bayad sila ng bayad. 
Kaya dinevelop yung concept of confession to one another, especially to religious leaders. Because when there is sin, when there is guilt, you need confession. But confession is in the hands of the religious powers. Therefore, guilt empowers religion and this empowers people. May komersyo ang pagbibigay ng kapatawaran sa kasalanan. Nabibili. Dalawang libong taon ang nabibili yan. And going beyond Christian church history, even going back to the history of Israel, laging ang daming offering. Kung ano nung offering, pag may kasalanan ka. Kaya sobrang ibinibigay ng emphasis ng religion ang pagiltihin ng mga tao. Mas maraming kasalanan, mas maraming guilt, mas maraming ambag, mas maraming bayad, mas maraming donasyon. Mas humihina yung posisyon ng tao, mas lumalakas yung posisyon ng religious institution. Eh, ito yun, yun ba talaga? Ang kalooban ng Diyos. Yung ba talagang mga sinasabi sa atin ng religious leaders and teachers and institutions na kasalanan ay kasalanan nga ba sa tingin ng Diyos? Religion has been notorious for creating needless guilt. Kaya yung mga taong tahimik ang buhay, madalas pag napasama sa mga, mga mahihigpit at maraming mga bawal-bawal na relihiyon, yung dating tahimik nilang buhay, ngayon punong-puno ng guilt, punong-puno ng mga pagtatago, pagkukonwari, pagbabalat kayo, at pagbabayad ng kasalanan, na yung dating hindi naman nila iniinda, ngayon iniinda na nila kasi sobra silang tinuruan ng daming konsepto ng kasalanan. Religion has been notorious for making people feel guilty based only on invented teachings or twisted interpretation and application. Kaya pati tuloy ang isinusuot, nagiging kasalanan na kung mali ang suot, haba ng buhok, kinakain, sinasabi, paraan ng pagdarasal, sa ang direksyon haharap pag nagdarasal. Dumami ng dumami ang mga batas na hindi naman kayang sundin ang mga tao, dumami ng dumami tuloy ang guilt. Kaya mas maraming psychologically disturbed among the religious than among those who are not so religious. Kasi ang mga sobrang religyoso, lalot na exposed sa very conservative and controlling teachings, siyempre sa dami ng mga batas, ang dami nila nabibreak, lagi tuloy silang guilty. Guilt needs forgiveness. Forgiveness is empowers the dispenser of the forgiveness. Therefore, guilt of people means power to religious institutions. Kaya galit na galit si Jesus sa mga bagay na yan. Sa napakarami mga bawal ang do's and don'ts, na kumbaga, pinagbawal yon dahil alam na hindi mo masusunod. Therefore, pag hindi mo nasunod, magigilty ka. Pag nagilty ka, lalapit ka sa religious institution, bibili ka, hihingi ka, magmamakaawa ka ng forgiveness, it empowers the institution. At kitang-kita yun ni Jesus, kaya tinuligsa niya. Sabi ni Jesus sa Matthew 15, 7-9, And you are nothing but show-offs. Sinasabi niya ito sa mga religious leaders. Isaiah, the prophet, was right when he wrote, that God had said, All of you praise me with your words, but you never really think about me. It is useless for you to worship me when you teach rules made up by humans. Sabi ni Jesus sa mga religious leaders of his time, Tamang-tama ang propetang si Isaiah nung sinabi niya sa inyo na ipinapasabi ng Diyos sa inyo na walang kakwenta-kwenta sa Diyos ang inyong mga pagsamba, mga pag-aawit, Kasi hindi naman talaga kayo makadyos. Bali, wala ang pagsamban nyo kung umiimbento naman kayo ng mga katuroan na gawagawa nyo lamang. Imagine. The religious system making up rules that could not be followed and obeyed anyway. Rules that make people guilty because they could not be obeyed anyway. And rules that only steal, kill, and destroy life. At sabi ni Jesus, I came that you might have life and have it to the full. Why? Exaggerated religion takes away life, the fullness of life. Lahat bawal. Ang lapad-lapad ng kalsada, pero pwede ka lang dumaan doon sa makitid, nagguhit, na puti sa gitna. Samantalang pwede namang umurong ka pa sa kaliwa o sa kanan para lumuwag, pero ang kitid. At pagkakabisala, konting pagkakamali, kailangan mo na naman ng forgiveness. Guilty-guilty ka tuloy, 
Bumibig ka tang damdamin, bumibig ka tang puso imbes gumaan. Kaya sabi ni Jesus, come to me all of you who are tired and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Rest from what? Rest from all the man-made and invented rules that you cannot follow anyway, making you feel bad. A particular sin or guilt could possibly only be according to people, to others. Kaya iba-ibang sekta, iba-ibang grupo, ang daming dumadagdag ng mga rules. Pati kung paano mo hahatiin ang suklay mo ng buhok, anong isusuot mo pag linggo, gano'ng kahaba ang iyong palda, dumami na lang dumami yung rules. Ano ang dapat na recipe ng tinapay na kinakain sa Lord's Supper, ano ang pwedeng kantahin, anong instrumento ang hindi pwedeng tugtugin, ang dami. Imbento lang lahat ng tao. A particular sin or guilt could possibly only be according to conditioning or nurture. Bakit nagigilty ka tungkol sa isang bagay? Merong dalawang batang babae, nakita nila yung auntie nila, nagbiyahe, nagsakay ng mga sasakyan, nagbiyahe, nakapants. Ang dalawang batang babae ito, palibasa at lumaki sa isang very conservative church, sa kasalanan magpants sa babae, agad-agad sila nagpray together. Inihihingi nila ng tawad sa Diyos ang auntie nila na nakapants. Meanwhile, their other cousins are not bothered by it. Simply because the religious exposure of these two groups is different. The exposures are different. In other words, may mga ikinakagilty mo, hindi dahil galit ang Diyos, kundi dahil pinalaki ka lang, hinubog ang utak mo na dapat kang magilty tungkol doon. Bakit may nagigilty pag kumain ng dinugan? Merong hindi. Meron naman nagigilty pag kumain ng dinugan na walang puto. Pero pag may puto, hindi nagigilty. Iba-iba kasi ang turo na nadinig. Kaya sabi ni Jesus, at dami niyong imbentong katuroan. Mga katuroan tungkol sa pagkain, ito mga hindi pwedeng kainin. Sabi niya, it's not important what gets into the mouth, but what gets out of it. Pinalaya ni Jesus ang mga Israelita sa mga rules ng diet. Mga rules na, ay, biyernes na ng gabi, walang lalabas ng bahay. Ay, Sabado ngayon, walang kikilos kasi... Holy sa Diyos ang Sabado. Ang daming ginawa ni Jesus na himala at pagtatrabaho sa Sabado para baliin yung guilt ng mga tao pag meron silang kailangan gawin pag Sabado. Sabi niya, Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. And you can go on and on and on with so many examples na ang daming batas ng relihiyon ng Israel binasag ni Jesus. Hindi dahil si Jesus ay lawbreaker. Kasi hindi naman talaga galing sa Diyos yung law. Dinevelop lang ng religion. Ang choice pa lang naman, ganito eh. Jesus was a lawbreaker. Jesus went against the will of God. Or, because Jesus is the Son of God, the perfect image of God, the incarnation of God, itinuwid niya ang mga baloktot na paniniwala na libong taon na na kumukubabaw, nage-enslave sa mga tao. A particular sin or guilt could possibly only be according to impressions. Akala mo lang, pinaglalaroan ka lang ng yung guni-guni. Tulad ng yung mga sobrang espiritual na tao na nakakakita ng demonyo sa loob ng tasa ng kape. Yung iba naman, hindi. Kasi masyadong malikot ang guliguni nila. Kumbinsidong kumbinsido sila na sila espiritual, sila ay CR, marami silang nakikita. At pag kinonvince mo ang utak mo na ganun, talaga makakakita ka ng demonyo sa arrangement ng leaves, sa ulap. Tulad din na nakakakita ka ng mga poon, santo at santa sa ulap. kanya-kanyang impression. Kaya sabi sa Bible, your mind will play tricks on you. Psalm 51.3 I know about my sins and I cannot forget the burden of my guilt. Nakita nyo, burden, kakambar ng guilt, because to be guilty is to be tortured. Therefore, it is hell in your heart. But sinfulness or guilt could only be a state of mind and not an actual judgment of and by God. Totoo, meron mang ilang-ilang talagang kasalanan na hindi dapat gawin. Totoo yun. At pag ginawa, dapat mag para magbago. Pero ang daming dagdag ng mga tao, ng religion, na hindi naman talaga kasalanan, pinagawa lang at pinagmukhang kasalanan, nagigilty tuloy yung mga tao at nahihirapan sa buhay. Dapat suriin at alamin kung alin ang alin 
alin ang dapat talagang seriously sundin at alin yung suma, iba na suma, ay invento lang yan ng tao invento lang yan ng religion si Jesus nga binasag yan si Jesus nga hindi sinunod yan si Jesus nga pinalaya ang mga tao dyan eh eh bakit ako magpapaalipin uli sayang naman si Jesus in fact pati yung mga tinatawag ng mga tao na demonic possession hindi naman lahat possession talaga eh some demonic possession as people think they are could be an issue of mental health or illness it could only come from clinical depression or schizophrenia. Schizophrenia. Yes, may totoong demonic possession, pero baka 95% ng akala natin demonic possession, depression lang pala. May clinical explanation. Na nung araw, yung mga matatanda noong unang panahon, wala naman sila clinical explanation, kaya anything like that, demonyo agad ang dahilan. But now, we are gifted with knowledge, and the Lord has revealed so much of what we should know through science. Science could be God's last prophet. Marami na ituturo at napapaluanag ang Diyos sa pamamagitan ng siyensya. At ang siyensya, hindi kalaban ng tunay na pananalig. Sa siyensya, nadidiscover lang natin how things work. But you know that it is God who created things and made things work. So nakikilala natin lalo ang Diyos sa pamamagitan ng siyensya. Hindi dapat pagbanggain ang siyensya at pananalig sa tunay na Diyos, bagamat kung minsan ang siyensya at relihiyon, lalo't old-fashioned, ay magkabangga. Kasi maraming kadiliman ang isip ng old-fashioned religion dahil nung nilikha ang mga doktrina at mga teaching nun, ang mga tao, yung marami pang hindi alam. Tapos nagpapanggap silang Diyos ang may sabi sa kanila, but proven by time and proven by knowledge and discoveries na yung mga paniniwala nila hindi based on fact, not based on science, not based on natural law, of which God is the author. Kaya mahalaga mulat ang isip. For example, 1810, The next day the Lord let an evil spirit take control of Saul and he began acting like a crazy man inside his house. You see, evil spirit and crazy related in the same verse. Kasi marami talagang craziness, akala lang natin evil spirit, akala nung nag-o-observe evil spirit, isusulat niya evil spirit, kasi hindi pa niya alam na mayroong such a thing as depression and schizophrenia. Kaya even the terminologies used in ancient times should be re-read now in the light of knowledge of science. Hindi masama ang science kasi just ang may lika ng lahat ng natural law. At yung science naman, dinidiscover lang what is natural law. Gravity, force, velocity, quantum physics, the power of light. Lahat yan, Diyos ang may likha. Because everything on earth is the Lord's. All who live in it. Everything was created by God. So sinfulness, especially based on an enlightened teaching, could only be according to one's self-manufactured thought or belief or mind. It could only be according to one's conditioned thought, belief, mind. Bakit naman nung araw sa Old Testament, condition silang mag-isip na entitled ang mga lalaki magkaroon ng maraming asawa, lalo at sila ay mga patriarchs, na entitled kahit si Abraham na anak ng kanyang katulong na babae, na uh, entitled si Jacob na magkaroon ng dalawang asawa, etc., etc. Bakit naman biglang sa New Testament, hindi na. Kasi naiiba yung culture, naiiba yung needs, naiiba yung politics, naiiba yung dynamics of family. Because these rules were crafted and developed as civilization developed. Hindi naman komo sinabi, 5,000 years ago, na ganitong gawin mong pagluluto, ngayon, egar yung pa rin ang gagawin mo kasi nakondition na yung utak mo sa ganung uri ng pagluluto. Dapat nagre-react ka to ever-growing knowledge to your context, to your needs. Parang yung isang babae na pag nagluluto siya ng isang mahabang pata, leg ng baboy, ibinabali e niya. Tapos itinanong siya, bakit lagi mong binabali yung binibake mo na pata? E ang laki-laki ng oven mo. Sabi naman niya, e eh, kasi yan ang kinaagis ng ko na ang nanay ko tuwing nagluluto siya ng pata, binabali niya. Yung pala naman, kaya binabali ng nanay niya, ang liit-liit ng oven nila nung araw, eh, hindi kasya. Eh, pero ngayon, laki-laki na ng oven niya, kasya kahit sumuot siya, kasama pa siya. 
Binabali pa rin niya kasi nakatali yung utak niya sa isang matandang pag-iisip. Nangin ay pwede nang ibahin kasi lumaki na yung omen niya. At ganun din sa maraming bagay sa ating buhay. Nakatali tayo sa mga matandang pag-iisip. Well, may mga matandang ng pag-iisip na hanggang yun, effective and powerful. Pero maraming hindi na. Dapat mo nang baguhin. Hindi nagbabago ang Diyos, hindi nagbabago ang katotohanan, pero nagbabago yung realidad mo pang araw-araw kung papaano at kung saan gusto ng Diyos na ikaw ay lumaya, magkaroon ng buhay na masagana at masaya. Kaya sabi ni Lord, come to me all of you who are tired and heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Pagod na pagod na kayo sa pagsunod sa mga kaugaliang hindi na bagay sa inyong panahon. Condition nurtured by social mores, religion, and legal structures Many minds are really not free. And because iba-ibang conditioning, kaya iba-ibang kabihasnan, iba-ibang community, iba-ibang lipunan, iba-iba rin ang kinakagilty. Iba-iba kasi ang kultura. So it is possible that you only think and you believe that you sin, but actually you are not sinning. Bago naman tayo agad-agad biglang gawin lahat ang akala natin bawal, suriin muna kasi meron talagang hanggang ngayon hindi dapat gawin. Pero konti na lang yun. Pinakonti na ngayon ni Jesus eh. Remember, Israel had 10 commandments and 610 other commandments called misvots. Pwede bang dumaan na maghapon na hindi mo mabreak yung isa man lang sa 610? Eh sabi sa Bible, when you obey one and not obey the others, when you obey all and not obey only one commandment, it's as good as not obey yung all. So, guilty ka araw-araw. Kaya pinagaan ni Jesus ang buhay, konting-konti na lang ang itinara niyang bawal. Tapos marami mga Kristiyano ngayon, lagi ang isip, bawal yan, bawal yan. Bawal po ba to? Bawal po ba to? Ang laman lagi ng utak nila kung ano yung bawal. Kasi, ganun ang korte ng utak nila, kahit panganak kay Jesus na, hindi pa lubos na nauunawa ang ginawa ni Jesus sa law at sa mga tao. Sometimes you consider yourself sinful when you break your own belief and thought when you break what you believe in. But the question is, is what you believe in really what God wants you to believe in? Or is it there in your mind only because somebody placed it there? Not necessarily God, though sometimes in the name of religion. So may mga guilt na ikaw lang ang may gawa o inilagay lang ng tao sa'yo. Tulad ng may mga babaeng pinalaki ng lola at nanay ni Lana, kailangan, babae ka, lagi ka nagsasakripisyo, lagi ikaw ang huling-huling matulog, lagi ikaw ang pinakamaagang gumising, dapat lahat, ganyan, 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 ganyan. Kaya tuloy, pag hindi mo nagagawa ngayon na ikaw na ang nanay, ikaw na ang asawa, guilty guilty ka kasi pinalaki ka ng lola mo na dapat ang babae ay super, super masakripisyo. Eh, ang dinunod ang sinasabi pala ng lola mo nun, yung siya at yung nanay mo na hindi naman sila empleyado nun, nasa bahay maghapon. Pero ikaw, empleyado na rin, katulad na rin ng husband mo. Pareho lang kayong umaalis, nagtatrabaho, bumabalik na pagod. Tapos gusto mo pa maging superwoman kasi pinalaki ka ng lola mo na ganun dapat. Eh, naiba na ang panahon. Kaya dapat ang tao, tinitignan, ano bang sasabihin ni Kristo tungkol sa case na to? Dapat ko bang ikagilty to? Dapat ko bang ikagilty na binibili ko na lang na damit, wash and wear, hindi ko na pinaplansya, ikinukula, inaalmirol. Eh, kasi nagtatrabaho din ako eh, sa labas ng bahay. Wala na akong masyadong maraming oras. Pwede ko ba talagang isigang na lang yung bangos, ihulog ko doon sa sabaw at kumulo siya? O, kailangan ko pa talaga siyang durugin, tanggalan ng tini, lagyan ng sahog, igisa, at ibalik doon sa balat ng bangos, tahiin, at iprito para relyeno ang bangos. Kasi ako dapat yung perfect mother. Maraming kinakagilty na hindi dapat. Therefore, to not sin or to not seem to be sinning to be sinless at least in your own mind do not have invented rules minimize rules kahit sa isang tahanan to minimize sobrang guilt minimize rules may mga bahay na lahat dapat at home 7 o'clock magdi-dinner sabay-sabay with the traffic in our city now can you do that? Dapat lahat nasa family lunches pag Sunday. Pero may mga times talagang you don't feel good. May mga times na may mga company outing. Pero guilty-guilty ka kasi dapat. Ang daming dapat. 
Dapat ganito, dapat ganun. Marami tayong ini-invent the rules. Na yes, may konting pakinabang, pero pag ikinompare mo sa maraming at malaking ibinabayad, nagiging pampabigat ng buhay. May mga hindi pwedeng magdamit ng hindi planchado, may konting lukot. Understandable lang ngayon yan, yung medyo lukot-lukot, yung parang, hinulo, parang nilamutak, kasi busy ang tao. Hindi na katulad nung araw that you had all the time in the world na maging perfect planchadora. May mga bagay na pinapalampas na lang para lumuwag ang buhay. Do not subject yourself to needless rules. E pag napasali ka sa grupo, lalo sa isang relihiyon na ang daming bawal, araw-araw, tad-tad ng guilt ang buhay mo. Imbes gumaan, bumigat. And change the rules that are only man-made. So examine the rules if they are really from God. And to be free, change your attitude and mind about the rules. Pero kung usapan natin mga rules dito, yung gawa lang ng tao, hindi talaga galing sa Diyos. O yung akala na iba galing sa Diyos, pero inimbento lang pala ng mga religious leaders. Kaya importante yung manuri. And it's always more liberating If you have the choice to be liberal than conservative, mas panamik ang luwag kung hindi ka masyadong conservative. Romans 7.7, anong sabi ni Paul? If it had not been for the law, I would not have known what sin is really like. Sabi niya, eh kung hindi lang naman may law, eh di hindi ako sinful. Kaya lang naman ako nagiging sinful kasi may law na hindi ko naman masunod. For example, sabi niya, I would not have known what it means to want something that belongs to someone else unless the law had told me not to do this. Sabi niya, kaya ako maraming guilt dahil sa law. Dahil maraming bawal. Eh kung hindi naman bawal at hindi ko alam na bawal yan, eh hindi ako guilty. So the more law that you know in your mind, the more guilty you become. Sabi ni Paul. Meanwhile, sabi naman ni Jesus, Matthew 5.17, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. So magdadalawang loob ka, Ano? So yung law, tuloy pa rin. Kasi hindi daw inabolish ni Jesus. Pero, finulfill niya. Anong ibig sabihin nun? That Jesus took upon Himself the sins of the world. Lahat ng ipinaparatang, ibinibintang, ibinubunto ng law na kasalanan ng tao, inako ni Jesus at binayaran niya ng kanyang buhay, therefore bayad na. Jesus received all the punishment prescribed by the law, thus fulfilling them. Kaya si Jesus ay nabato, nadura, nabugbog, napako, namatay, hinampas, lahat na. Therefore bayad. Isaiah 53.5 Referring to Jesus, as many Christian scholars would say, but He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on Him, and by His wounds we are healed. Therefore, lahat ng kasalanan ng humanidad, ng sangkatauhan, in the past, in the present, and in the future, bayad na ni Jesus, who is the Son of God, Who sacrifice is timeless, good for the past, the present, and the future. Because as far as the divine is concerned, there is no past, present, or future. Everything is an ongoing present. So yung ginawa ni Jesus 2,000 years ago is still effective now, and it will be effective forever, because He is the Son of God. And yet, parang may mga tao, Christiano na pasan pa nila yung cross na kinuha ng ani Jesus. Iniligtas na ni Jesus, nagbabato pa sa sarili, nagpapabato sa kapwa, at nambabato ng kapwa, eh hindi na nga ipinabato ni Jesus yung babae, caught in an act that was considered sinful. Parang walang Jesus, parang walang Savior, parang walang cross, parang walang resurrection. Samantalang sinabi, when Jesus died and resurrected, He completed once for all the payment for all sin. Real sin or imagined sin, all paid for. Romans 3.22, God treats everyone alike. He accepts people only because 
they have faith in Jesus Christ. Not because they obey laws, but because they have faith in Jesus Christ. Ang ginagawa naman ng iba, parang bulang lang, parang salad. Yes, I will have faith in Jesus Christ that He has paid for all my sins, that He has paid for all the law requires. And at the same time, I will still obey the law, I will still feel guilty when I break it, I will still be enslaved by the law. So magkahalo yung dalawa. Sabi sa Bible, not, uh, no person who is double-minded will please God. Naniniwala ka either that you are saved by your faith in the perfect work of Christ, or you have to work out your own salvation and obey all the laws, and when you break one, though you break the others, though you obey the others, you are still a sinner. Well, you only have to subscribe to one school of thought. You cannot have both. Which is the confused state of many so-called Christians today. Isang paana sa law, isang paana sa grace of God. Kaya lito. But Jesus voided the law and its effect on the world. Pinawalang bisa na ni Jesus ang law. As very dramatically demonstrated by His dealing with the law of the Sabbath, the law on diets, the law governing women's behavior, na hindi sila pwede maging leader, makihalobilo sa mga lalaki, when God or the Lord Jesus Christ allowed Mary to sit with the men and be trained for leadership. Ang dami ng ginawa ni Jesus sa ganyan. Romans 10.4, sabi ni Paul, For Christ has brought the law to an end, so that everyone who believes is put right with God. So how are you put right with God? By obeying the law? No, by believing in Jesus. Believing in Jesus is equal to or greater than obeying all the laws. That's why Paul is very clear that it is by grace, not by works, that we are saved. And besides, if you will insist on obeying the law, you will never pass. You will always fail. People are made right not because of their passing grade, which no one can make, but because grading was altogether abolished by Jesus. In other words, pumasa ang buong section, hindi dahil lahat matataas ang grade, kundi dahil inalis ni Jesus ang grading system. Hindi automatic, pasado ang lahat. Sabi sa James 2, when you break one of the laws, you break all. James 2.10. At sabi sa Romans 3.10, no one is righteous, not even one. So how can you insist on being guilt-free by obeying the law when no one can be righteous? Because when you break one law, though you obey the others, you are considered as a lawbreaker anyway. Kaya ang solusyon ni Jesus, wala na lang grade, eh di pasado lahat. Ako na lang ang kukuha ng exam for everybody by proxy. E di pasado lahat. Tapos ikaw ngayon, pinipilit mo pang bumalik doon sa examination room. Ibabagsak mo din lang naman. Tapos guilty-guilty kapag bumabagsak ka. Parang wala kang Jesus. Parang wala kang Savior. Galatians 3, 24-25 And so the law was in charge of us until Christ came. In order that we might then be put right with God through faith. Yun lang do, yun daw law may effect lang hanggang dumating si Jesus. Pero nung dumating na si Jesus, yung grace na, yung love of God, the perfect sacrifice of Christ na, ang mahalaga para ang tao ay mahalagay sa matuwid na kalagayan in relationship with God. Verse 25, Now that the time for faith is here, the law is no longer in charge of us. Pagkatas, tanong kayo ng tanong, pwede ba akong kumain ng dinugan? Pwede ba akong may gawin pag sabat? Pwede ba akong ganito? Pwede ba akong mag-pants? Pwede ba akong... Puro law yan eh. Bakit nandiyan pa ang utak ng tao? Eh sinabi na nga, the law is no longer in charge of us. Isa na lang law ang natira, yung ginawa ni Jesus. Love one another. So bawal po bang maagaw ng asawa ng may asawa kasi wala na palang law? Eh, loving ba yun? Oo, love na love ko po yung lalaki. Eh, yung asawa niyang babae, love mo ba pag inago mo yung husband niya? Eh, hindi po. Eh, therefore, bawal pa rin agawin yan kasi hindi loving. Eh, pero, pwede ko na po bang paiksiin ang buho ko, kababae kong tao? Pag ba pinaiksi mo yung buho mo, you hate others? May napapahamak ba? May napapasama? Wala po. Eh, di pwede. 
Eh pwede ko bubang kalbuhin yung kapwa ako dahil nainis ako sa buhok niya. Ang ganda-ganda. Laving ba yun? Ako malbo ka ng kapwa. Hindi po. Hindi ka naman barbero. Hindi po. Eh di bawal pa rin. Kaya yung love, bagamat isang commandment yun, maraming covered. Ang itatanong mo lang lagi, this is loving. Para yung mga kung anong kulay ang susuot mo. Eh di pwede ko na po palang mag pagpupunta ako sa church, ang isusuot ko na lang, band-aid. O medyo conservative po ako sa lawn pass, tatapalan ko na lang po ang mga delikadong bahagi na aking katawan. Loving ba yun? E eh, maganda naman po ang katawan ko. E eh, nalito naman lahat ng lalaki tuwing dumadaan ka. Nag-away sila ng mga asawa nila. Loving ba yun? Ay, hindi po pala. Therefore, takpan mo yung katawan mo. Yun ang loving. So malaki yung ibig sabihin ng love. Hindi naman inalis ni Jesus lahat ng law eh. Pero isang itinira niya. Pero ang dami-daming, wala ka naman nagagawang mali sa kapwa, wala kang inaagawan, wala kang ninanakaw, tapos nag enjoy ka, tapos magigilty ka. Yun ang sinasabi ni Jesus. Be free. Romans 3.28 We see that people are acceptable to God because they have faith and not because they obey the law. Tulad ng prodigal son na tinatawag, Di ba hiningi niya lahat ang pera, mana na, mana mula sa tatay niya, naglustay siya, nagpakasarap, nag-enjoy, tapos naghihirap, umuwi. The prodigal son broke the law. But his faith in the Father saved, restored, and uplifted him. Kung susukatin yung prodigal son by the law, guilty. Hiningi ang mana niya, nagwala pa sa oras, naglustay, nagpakasarap, nagpakalayaw-layaw. Pero hindi yun ang mahalaga eh. Ang mahalaga, naniniwala siya na mabait ang tatay niya, tatanggapin siya, so umuwi siya, tinanggap nga siya. Inungkat ba ng tatay kahit any of the laws? Hindi. Kasi naniniwala yung tao na yung tatay niya mabait, tatanggapin siya kahit katulong na lang, pero tatanggapin siya. At ang umiral, yung love of the father, not the law. And that father in the story of Jesus, of the prodigal son and the father, is really about our father in heaven. Pag umuuwi ka, bumabalik ka sa Diyos, ni hindi niya inuungkat anong law ang binrake mo, ano dapat ang parusa niya. No, umuuwi ka, naniniwala kang mahal ka niya, tinatanggap ka niya. Tulad ng unconditional love ng father of the so-called prodigal son. Malinaw kay Jesus, there is no more law except one, which is love. John 13.34, a new command I give you. New ha? Ibig sabihin, It replaces all the old laws. All the old commands is replaced by this one solitary, singular, powerful command. A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. Nakita natin yan sa prodigal son's father. Siya yung model. He never invoked nor applied the law to his erring but returning son. Instead, he applied the law of love. So the new question now is, anong verse ang nagbabawal niyan? Bawal ba yan? Ang question now is, is it loving? Versus, is it lawful, religious, or legal? No, that's already outmoded. The question now is, is it loving? And if it's not loving, it doesn't mean you cannot do it. You have to ask a second question. Is it hateful of others? Will it hurt others? No. Therefore, you can do it. Because the believer, the Christian believer, is free to do anything that Jesus does not prohibit. But if you will consider everything that Moses prohibits, wala ka nang magagawa sa buhay mo na hindi ka magigilty. Kaya nga, yun ay binayaran na, at ngayon ay binaliwala na ni Jesus at malinaw ang pagtuturo ni Paul, you are no longer under the law, but under grace. Jesus create, corrected and updated the reading, the interpretation and application of the law. Marami siyang ginawa, kaya sila sabi niya, you have heard this idea, but I'm telling you, it's not that, it is this idea. You have heard that it was said, but I'm telling you, it's like this. Marami siyang itinuwid. At pag hindi mo itinuwid ang pananaw mo, sayang si Jesus para namang wala siyang ginawa. Jesus sent people free from the law, therefore making people sinless. Not because people are morally perfect, but because Jesus voided the law that makes them 
guilty. Dati nakalagay no parking, nagpa-park ka, edi masama ka. Ngayon, nakapark ka pa rin, hindi ka na masama kasi tinanggal yung no parking sign, hindi na bawal. Alin ang mga hindi na bawal at alin ang totoo ay bawal pa? Yun ang suriin kasi meron talagang bawal pa. That which is not loving. Loving to you and loving to other people. Loving of you, loving of others. Kaya dapat, yun na ang umiiral sa ating pag-iisip. Loving ba itong gagawin ko or not? Galatians 4, 4 to 5. God sent His Son. His Son obeyed the law so He could set us free from the law. And so we could become God's children. So now to become a child of God is not to obey all the rules but to believe in Jesus. Parang to obey all the rules, aakyat ka ng bangin, nalaglag ka ng laglag, hindi ka makarating sa ibabaw. Ito ngayon si Jesus, elevator, sumakay ka na lang. Kaya grace, undeserved kindness. Romans 8, 2, For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. Kasi pag yung old-fashioned law, ang pinairal mo sa buhay, mo, puro sin yan, therefore puro death. But Jesus is life. Jesus is forgiveness. Jesus is the way to become a child of God. People are no longer under the law. Yet so many people always invoke and refer to verses and laws. Kung gusto man ng verse, ang invoke mo na lang, John 13, 34, na sinabi ni Jesus, love one another. This is the new command. This is the new law. Romans 3, 21, now we see how God does make us acceptable to Him. The law and the prophets tell how we become acceptable and it isn't by obeying the law of Moses. So, niya, hindi ka dyan maliligtas. And if there is no law, then there is no concept of sin, then you are not a sinner. Then you should not be guilty. Romans 3.20 all the law does is to point out our sin. So, ang ginagawa naman ng law para lang idikdik sa mukha natin na makasalanan tayo eh. So, why focus on the law? Why focus on sin? At sabi pa ng Romans 4.15, where there isn't a law, it cannot be broken. E di kung walang batas, walang lawbreaker. Romans 7.8, but without the law, sin is dead. Kaya, ang mga nananali kay Jesus ay may buhay na walang hanggan. Hindi dahil perfect ang pagsunod nila sa law, kasi tinanggal sila under the law and they were placed under grace. Therefore, there is no law to break. They are not lawbreakers. There is no sin to commit without the law. Therefore, they are not sinners. Therefore, they are holy. Kaya ang mga tawag sa anak lang Diyos ay holy. Not because you are perfectly moral or morally perfect. But because the laws had been suspended and voided for your benefit. Yun ang deep theology of the life, ministry, death, and resurrection of Jesus. Romans 8, 1-2 to Therefore, there is no, now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because through Jesus Christ, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. Ang na kay Jesus daw, hindi na uusigin. Wala nang hatulan. Pagharap mo sa Panginoon in that final last day, hindi na dahil masisave ka or not, kundi awarding ceremony na lang kung gaano karaming award ang tatanggapin mo. Pero hindi na para piliin pa kung ikaw ipaparusahan or not. Niya, there is no more condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Hindi ka na dadaan sa paglilitis kasi si Jesus dumana sa paglilitis. Hindi ka na paparusahan kasi siya na ang tumanggap ng parusa. Hindi ka na mamamatay kasi siya ang namatay at nabuhay na muli para sa'yo. Kaya meron tayong Savior. Behave as if and because you have a Savior. Tigilan na ang sobrang obsession with law, with sin, with guilt and judgment of yourself and others. Be free, sabi ni Lord. Come and rest. I want you to have life. Peaceful, restful. Pero pag lagi kang guilty, lagi kang nagaharap ng kasalanan mo at kasalanan ng iba, anong klaseng peace yun? Hindi yung magiging peace. Kaya sabi sa Romans 6.14, Don't let sin keep ruling your lives. Huwag laging sin ang laman ng utak, sin mo, sin ng iba, batuhan kayo ng batuhan kasi sin ang issue. You are ruled by God's kindness 
and not by the law. So why don't you be kind to others? Nakikita mo, nagkakasala yung iba according to the law. Babatuhin mo according to the law. Eh, hindi ka na nga under the law. Why don't you be kind instead? Sa halip na maging legalistic, judgmental, and self-righteous. Sabi ka nun, tigilan nyo na ang issue ng sin. Lampas na kayo doon. Magmaster kayo, mag-PhD kayo, magpakadalubhasa kayo sa kindness. Hindi sa judgment. So do not be fixated on sin. Do not be oppressed by the issue of sin. Do not throw the law. Do not throw verses. Do not throw stones that condemn others and yourself. Instead, love one another. Just as God loved us through Jesus. Galatians 5.4 Those of you who try to be put right with God by obeying the law have cut yourselves off from Christ. You are outside God's grace. Ang mga pilit pa rin nagsisikap to earn merits to judge themselves and others by obeying the law, tinuputol nyo ang relasyon nyo kay Jesus. Nagiging outsider kayo sa grasya ng Diyos kasi hindi kayo umaasa sa grasya. Dumedepende na naman kayo sa works, sa performance, sa pagpasa sa exam. So doble ang disadvantage when you flee to the law, when you invoke the law, when you position yourself under the law. One, you will fail because you cannot pass it. Number two, you cut your relationship with Jesus. Because your relationship with Jesus is premised on one condition, contract, provision, that you believe that the work of Jesus is enough to save you from all that you do have done and cannot do, Therefore, you are saved not because of your performance, not because you obey the law, but because of Jesus, then you are and you belong to Jesus. But if you insist on the law, you go back to the law, you disregard the work of Christ, you cut your relationship with Jesus. At bahala ka sa buhay mo. Sige, magpaka-perfect ka. Sundin mo lahat. Total, ipinipilit mo. But when you cannot obey all, why insist on one or two or three when breaking one and obeying all the others is equivalent to breaking all? Bakit ka magpapagod? The other hell could only be in your mind. Hell, in some cases, could only be a mental condition. At pag nabubuhay ka sa guilt, sa takot, hell yun. So ang impyerno, bukod sa impyerno ang tinutukoy sa eternity, Yung impyerno dito sa buhay ngayon, nasa isip, nasa pag-iisip. Nababalisa ka, nagugulumihanan, natatakot kasi nakasaksak sa loob ng utak mo ang lo. Inversely, the other heaven could be in the mind, could be a mental condition. Nasa isip din, nasa pag-iisip din. Sino ang humubog ng yung utak? Ano ang korte ng yung utak at pananalig? Dahil yun ang magbibigay ng desisyon kung anong uri ng buhay magkakaroon ka sa mundo. But have we been changed by our faith in the Lord? Kaya ang sabi sa Romans 12 too, Be changed by the renewing of your mind. Baguhin mo ang buhay mo, baguhin mo ang nararamdaman mo, baguhin mo ang emosyon mo, sa isang bagay lang, baguhin mo ang paraan ng iyong pag-iisip. Isunod mo kay Jesus ang iyong isip. Papaghariin mo si Jesus sa iyong isip. Hindi ang demonyo, hindi ang law, hindi kung sino-sino, si Jesus. At magkakaroon ka ng kapayapaan, katahimikan, matatanggap mo ang iyong sarili, matatanggap mo ang iyong kapwa, dahil pare-pareho lang naman tayong umaasa sa kabaitan ng Diyos. Yes, there is the devil out there. But most of the time, the devil is in your mind. The devil that tortures you could be in your mind, created by others and placed there, or created by yourself. Kaya sabi sa Proverbs 23.33, You will see weird things, and your mind will play tricks on you. Nagigilty ka, dahil lang yung mind mo ang nagpapagilty sa'yo, dahil may laman nyo ng mga thoughts na pampagilty. Tahimik ang isip mo, Kasi may mga laman na nakakapagpapayapa ng isip. While there is 
And there are issues that you really should be bothered about. Konti lang yun. Ang higit na nakararami, imbento lang natin o imbento ng kapwa. Even many visions and dreams and so-called revelations and other fears could only be in the mind. Created by conditioning, by auto-suggestion, or by obsession. Kaya yung mga obsessed na obsessed sa end times, laging napapanaginipan ng end times. At pagising, kinausap ako ng Diyos. Sinabi sa akin ng Diyos, yung pala guni-guni lang niya yun. Kasi kung ano iniisip mo, ano yung nasa guni-guni mo, kinakatakutan mo, o gustong-gusto mo, laging papasok sa utak mo yun, lalo pagka you are not in control of your mind when you are sleeping. Kaya hindi lahat ng panaginip ay bigay ng Diyos. Kasi kadalasan, kung anong iniisip mo, yun ang mapapaginipan mo. So ikaw din ang manufacturer ng dream. Kasi may vision ka. Meron ka na namang ganito, meron ganun. Meron palang vision na ibinibigay ang Diyos para gawin natin ang isang bagay. Ba't hindi ibinibigay sa aming lahat? Ba't sa'yo lang? O ikaw lang ang may makating guni-guni? Dapat natin suriin ang ganito mga bagay. Bagamat, meron pa rin mga totoong visions. Totoong mga dreams from God. Pero dapat mong suriin in relationship to the love of God through Jesus. Meron naman pamantayan para kapitan eh, si Jesus para salain, suriin ang lahat ng ating mga paniniwala at hindi paniniwala. What do you feel guilty about? Ano ang dala ng budhi nyo ngayon? Ano ang araw-araw ay bumabagabag sa inyo? Marami mga young people, lalo't nag-church, tapos may mga ibang sources of knowledge. Lagi nagtatanong, kasalanan po ba ito? Kasalanan po ba yun? Kasalanan po ba yun? Si Jesus mo ang, si Jesus ang tanongin mo. Pag si Moses ang tinanong mo, kasalanan lahat yan. Yung ang pumasok ng trabaho pag Sabado, kasalanan na yun sa low eh. Kaya si Jesus ang tanongin mo. Siya ang anak ng Diyos. In the name of Jesus, every knee will bow in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. Jesus is the perfect personification of God our Father in heaven. Sent to give light to the darkened world to straighten a very crooked path sent to be the door where there's only a wall that you cannot scale nor penetrate. Kaya itanong mo kay Jesus, your guilt could possibly be caused only by self-judgment and other people's judgment. Nagigilty ka dahil hindi ka first honor, naging second honor ka lang. Ba't ka guilty? Kasi yung nanay mo, nagdagdag sa'yo, dapat first ka, dapat first ka, dapat first ka. Eh kung hanggang doon lang talaga yung kaya mo, ba't ka magigilty? Although, kung nagpabaya ka, na pwede ka naman sana naging first, para hindi ka nagpabaya, eh, magiging first ka, well, pwede ka magilti-gilti ng konti para ituwid mo ang iyong pamamaraan. So, ang laging tanong mo, saan ang gagaling yung guilt? Sound ba yung basis? O, yun lang ang expectation ng iba, yun ang standard ng iba. Your guilt could possibly be caused only by social, religious, and legal conditioning and nurture. Kaya iba-iba ang kinakagilti ng mga tao sa iba't ibang sibilisasyon habang may iisa namang Diyos. Kasi iba-iba rin yung hindi mabuti para sa kanila at mabuti para sa ibang lahi. So, review your guilt. Review your hell. Review your devil. Ang itatanong mo lang, ikinakagilty mo, did I break the law of love? If you didn't, then don't be guilty because gave, uh, Jesus gave us just one new command. Accept yourself. Accept others. Live at peace with yourself, even with what many people call imperfection or wrong, as long as you pass the love test of Jesus and rest in Jesus. Drive your devil, your hell, and your guilt away. So I said, James 4, 7, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Apply it to guilt. Resist your guilt. Drive your guilt away and it will go away if the guilt is not really based on breaking the law of Jesus. Resist self-manufactured guilt and it will go away. Your devil, your hell, your guilt is removed forever by Jesus. Jesus paid the legal punishment and Jesus changed the law, the rule, setting you free from condemnation and guilt. Well, some basic real sins still are effective many of our guilt much of our guilt is not really premised on the jesus truth but only on religious conditioning 
because of the law. Be free in the Lord. Although it doesn't mean complete freedom for everything, we are free as long as we are loving. John 8, 36, So if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Be thankful for, enjoy your freedom in Jesus, and let others enjoy their freedom as well. Dear Lord, we thank you that you love us so much. You recognize that we cannot perform on our own. Father, you sent your Son, Jesus, to die in our place, to fulfill all the requirements of the law, and then to void and remove the law so that your children can live guilt-free, not because we are worthy, not because we are morally perfect, but because we are made your children, not by our performance, but by the performance of your Son, Jesus. Ipaunawa niyo sa amin ang halaga nito. Palayain kami at kami man nagpalaya sa aming mga kapwa. Pagbulay-bulayan natin sumandali ang kahulugan nito sa ating pang-araw-araw na buhay. And in quiet prayer, surrender your guilt to the Lord. Maybe you are carrying a load you don't have to carry. Sabi ni Lord, come to me and I'll give you rest. Find rest in Jesus. Lord, as your people remain silent for a while, continue teaching us. Let your voice be heard by everyone, in particular, in the basis and in the context of each one's personal life. Spend some time with the Lord.